right, we're looking at stability terms and definitions. So and when it comes to stability, we're basically considering an unforced, for now, we're considering an unforced system. X dot is equal to some function of X with some initial condition. We assume for, our, for the cases of our problems that the origin is an equilibrium. That is, F evaluated at zero is zero. And so we investigate the stability of the system at the origin. So here are some types of stability that we're going to be looking at. Stability in the sense of Lyapunov, asymptotic stability, exponential stability, quadratic stability, and bounded input, bounded output stability. So these are the kinds of stabilities we're going to be looking at. Stable in the sense of Lyapunov, ISL. So this is actually defined in a mathematical way. So it says if for every epsilon greater than zero, and usually when we see this in a math thing, we're usually talking about a very small epsilon. For every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta that may be a function of epsilon, positive, such, such that for x within x of norm within delta, then x of t is within epsilon for all time. So that's the concept of stability in the sense of Lyapunov. If you stay in a, in, in a circle around the origin, or in a ball around the origin, if you start within that, then you will stay within some other ball for all time. Okay, that is, so, and notice that, that the radius of the two balls, so this basically describes a ball uh, in, associated with the norm that you're using. And generally speaking, we're going to be using the two norm, the, the uh, standard Euclidean norm for this. Um, so the two norm less than delta is, is a ball in uh, the state space. And so this is saying that if I stay within a ball of radius delta, if I start within a radius, ball of radius delta, I'll stay within a ball of radius epsilon. So this doesn't talk anything about convergence or divergence. Well, it talks about divergence in the sense that, um, that since I'm going to stay within this ball for all time, I'm, I'm obviously not diverging. So basically, stable in the sense of Lyapunov means I'm not going to diverge. My system will not diverge. It doesn't say anything about convergence, though. Asymptotically stable, however, is talking about convergence. So if, if, so a system is asymptotically stable if it is stable in the sense of Lyapunov and if for some delta where the initial condition starts within a ball of delta, then the limit as x goes to zero, uh, I'm sorry, as time goes to zero, uh, as time goes to infinity of x, the limit is zero. So this says that my system will converge. So this is clearly a stronger form of stability than this. So we saw stability looking at the simple examples. Um, so that clearly this is a stronger form of stability than this. And so in, if you think in terms of uh, nested uh, spaces of functions, um, this the set of functions that are asymptotically stable lie within the set of uh, functions that are stable in the sense of the Alpenhoff. So that's what we have here. So exponentially stable. So if the system is asymptotically stable and, so again, we're having further nesting, and there exist positive constants, alpha, beta, and delta, such that we start within a ball of radius delta, then x of t is going to stay with, with uh, is going to be within this envelope. So we have a constant and times an exponential. So this exponential, since it is positive, uh, so e to the minus beta t is a decaying exponential. So what this is saying is that there is an exponential envelope that bounds the response x of t for all time. Okay. So now notice this constant may be really large. We don't know what alpha is. So this may be a really large thing, but this is an exponential, which means it will converge. And it not only converges, but it converges at a rate of beta. Okay, so it's not only so it's not just converging, it's converging exponentially fast. And finally we have quadratically stable, which is a kind of a different way of looking at things. So here we can we've talked about norms that involve positive definite matrices. So if we have a positive definite matrix P and a positive constant alpha, such that for all x on the system trajectory, 
if this is satisfied. The derivative with respect to time of the p-norm of x squared is less than or equal to minus alpha times the 2-norm squared of x. So this is kind of a weird looking definition for stability. We'll come back and look at it, but, uh, so, but this is the definition. And this is actually a stronger form of stability than the others. So in terms of nesting, we have all systems, stable and unstable. Here we have systems that are stable in the sense of Lyapunov. Within that, we have asymptotically stable systems. Within that, we have exponentially stable systems. And with that, we have quadratically stable systems. So we have varying degrees of, of compactness within these sets. So again, if we compare these definitions, stable in the sense of Lyapunov corresponds to all where all solutions that start near the equilibrium stay near the equilibrium forever. Asymptotically stable says all solutions that start near the equilibrium converge to the equilibrium. Exponentially stable says that they not only converge, but they converge exponentially fast. Quadratically stable says they converge with a guaranteed rate. Okay, so those are the comparisons. We also have some loose definitions. Unstable, system is unstable if it is not stable in the sense of Lyapunov. So we will call it definitely unstable. A system is said to be marginally stable if it is stable in the sense of Lyapunov, but not asymptotically stable. So again, these are loose definitions. These are not uh, math definitions like we saw for the other uh, definitions of stability. In terms of concepts of stability, we have, for example, an attractive or stable equilibrium. So this would be a stable equilibrium in the sense that if I start with the ball, if I start with the ball um, somewhere off the equilibrium, it will eventually settle back to the equilibrium. Okay, so. But, and if you start it at the equilibrium, it'll stay at the equilibrium. A dispersive or unstable equilibrium is such that, notice in this case, if the ball is perched exactly perfectly right on top, it will stay there. Okay, But if you move it just slightly to one side or to the other, it'll go away from that equilibrium. So it's a dispersive, divergent equilibrium. For, for uh, some systems, and particularly nonlinear systems, we can have what's called locally local stability. That is, if the ball starts near this equilibrium, it will stay near this equilibrium if, if it does not move too far. Whereas over here, is, there's another equilibrium, which is an unstable equilibrium. So here it is locally stable. Um, this can only happen for nonlinear systems. It does not happen for linear systems. And finally, we have marginally stable systems. The marginally stable systems means it will not necessarily come, if you, if you don't start this at the, at the origin, it will not necessarily stay at the origin. Okay, so if I started this ball over here and didn't do anything to it, it would just stay there. It wouldn't go back to the origin. It would just stay there. So this is the concept of marginally stable. All right, so in summary, for an LTI continuous time system, we need all the poles or eigenvalues to be in the open left half plane. Open meaning not including the imaginary axis. So closed left half plane would include the imaginary axis. Okay. For a discrete time system, we need all the poles or eigenvalues to be in the open unit disk. So unit within the unit circle. So again, open meaning not including the actual circle. For, for general systems, nonlinear or time varying systems, there are a number of notions of stability, and the various notions of stability will be explored further. So this, is, this lecture is our introduction to stability. We'll get in next time and talk about some more, uh, more uh, detail about stability. But stay tuned for some practice problems.